What is your most controversial movie take? I might get hate for this, but I think the comedy genre is dying. Everything now is just your typical, surface level, not funny, jokes that try to make you think they're witty. I don't know, maybe I'm just getting old. Edit, thank you for the award. Kind stranger, I didn't realize there'd be this much people who kind of agree. I think I assume because so many not funny comedies have been released lately that people must seem to like them enough that studios are motivated to keep making them. I say this all the time. WTF happened to just comedy movies? 99% of sex scenes are unnecessary. They could easily get the point across that sex is happening with subtle, nuanced imagery rather than 10 minutes of kissing with rough panting, destroying the apartment while clumsily removing clothing. It's just awkward. Miscommunication as drama is the worst type of plot point. If the film could be resolved in the first 20 minutes by the two leads having a civil conversation then I can't stand the film. Miscommunication in other contexts such as comedy is fine but as drama annoys me so much. Romantic comedies seem particularly likely to fall into this hole. I like a good romantic comedy but the bad ones really seem to do this pretty consistently. You don't have to force yourself to like the critically acclaimed movies you didn't enjoy. Fast and the Furious didn't need to go past one film. It definitely should have ended when Paul Walker died. The last movie was the worst in the series and I've seen Too Fast Too Furious a number of times. Book is a near perfect movie. From directing, writing, costing, sets props, music, and cinematography. The film in my opinion is a masterpiece. I am completely immersed in the film every time I watch it. And I have been watching it for close to 30 years. Its beauty and camp are the best thing in the world. They don't make films like it anymore. Edit. Thanks for all the awards friends. I'm so glad I'm not alone in my love of this film. Bangarang. A few years ago was the first time I heard that Hook wasn't very well liked and it blew my mind. That the grey with Liam Neeson isn't just a dumb wolf movie but can be taken as a beautiful ode to the fight to survive despair and depression by overcoming and caring natural forces such as illness and death. If you are familiar with the basic concepts of absurdist existentialism it fits in with that philosophy perfectly. I don't know if it was intended to be that way, but that's how I see it. It also explains the ending that annoys many people. It doesn't matter if he survived or died. He lived, once again into the fray, into the last good fight he'll ever know. Live and die on this day, even if he died, when he chose. Despite all odds and all the pain he's experienced to fight for his life anyway, he chose to live in that moment. Meaning it doesn't matter if he died in the next, he overcame his despair. Just my take lol. It's been a while since I watched it but I recall really enjoying that one and loving the ending. Modern day cynicism has destroyed the fun of watching movies just to be entertained. Now, every movie plot is ripped apart, overanalyzed, and politicized. You can't just have a big fun movie anymore without it being picked apart into nothingness. Really? The plot of the Polar Express is terrible and not reasonable at all. The whole story is about a kid who doesn't believe in Santa, who gets on a magic train to the North Pole, arrives in a city full of elves and reindeer, and is in a crowd of those elves and flying reindeer. Then when presented with a bell that you can only hear if you believe, he can't, like bro look around you. The second the train picked you up you shoulder bean like okay maybe Santa is real. End rant. I mean. James Cameron's avatar is nothing but eye candy. The story is shoot. Pretty sure this isn't a hot take. Michael Gambon did a bad job portraying Dumbledore in Harry Potter 3-7. I don't think he captured Dumbledore's demeanor or energy as it was described in the books. I was a big HP nerd growing up. I have a hard time focusing whenever he is in a scene because I just don't believe him as Dumbledore. I think it's also unfortunate that he was forced to follow Richard Harris after his untimely death because we had no choice but to subconsciously compare him to what was genuinely perfect casting. Film reviewers are out of touch and often have no idea what movie audience is like. Look at some cult classic much loved movies and they got dog shoot reviews at the time even though audiences loved them. You wanna know if a movie is good? Watch it yourself and see if you enjoy it. Also people like what they like. Someone may recommend a movie that sends you to sleep but for them it's riveting. Just live your life. Edit to say, I am not saying film critics reviewers are without any merit. 
But don't assume a movie is bad and you'll hate it purely because it got bad reviews from critics they're not necessarily a good measure of how enjoyable a movie is to the average moviegoer. Nothing will ever be funnier than when reviewers bombed Godzilla vs Kong because they found the dialogue and human characters underwhelming. Like bro IDK how to break it to you but people don't go see movies like that for the people. Pacific Rim got the same treatment and him like, man I'm here to watch a big ass robot beat the shoot out of a big ass monster. Star Wars is arguably the most overhyped film franchise out there. The original three are good movies I'll give you that. The prequels were laughably bad and the final three were also pretty bad. I liked Rouge 1. So out of a 9 movie set 5 are really bad 3 are good. And 1 is decent. Not exactly a good track record. Also I don't get the infatuation with Boba Fett. If you rewatch the original movies he's in it for two scenes where he does basically nothing then he trips over his own feet and falls into the mouth of that sand monster. Super badass bounty hunter. Compare Star Wars to any science fiction fantasy movie prior to its release and you will see the impact it had. Was it an exceptional movie beyond the special effects? Probably not but it raised the game considerably. The stakes are too big in modern cinema. My wife and I were very split on the movie split. She really liked it. I thought it was awful. Especially that third act. Anytime it gets brought up we have a non-serious argument about it. The movie itself wasn't great but holy shoot was I impressed by James McAvoy. He really gave different life to each of the personalities. I liked Home on the Range. It's not a Disney masterpiece by any means. But I find it an enjoyable enough movie. Hell. I much prefer movies that are offbeat and so bad they're good over crappy. Soulless. Pointless. Cash grabbing remakes of classics. Watchmen was good. Tom Cruise has not been a believable romantic lead in years possibly decades. Despite this, there are a few unnecessary forced kiss scenes in his more recent movies. Paula Patton in M.I. Ghost Protocol. Vanessa Kirby in M.I. Fallout and Emily Blunt in Edge of Tomorrow. Waterworld was fantastic. I use Waterworld all the time as an example of expectations. Ant-Man and the Wasp was accused pretty good. Like yes. It was dumb and a bit slow but I liked that. It was kinda just a fun movie. Not really controversial but something I don't hear anyone say but Rogue One is the only good Disney Star Wars movie. Rogue One proved Disney can make a good Star Wars movie. The Joker movie wasn't as great as everyone made it out to be. Mary Poppins is terrifying. At least she scared the hell out of me as a kid. I mean. The first thing we see her do is blow all those poor job applicants into the air. They looked scared out of their minds. We never see any of them land safely. For all we know, she's a mass murderer. I have a theory that thanks to DVDs having extra bonus footage for most films and debacles like the Snyder Cut, we now have films in theaters that just throw everything into the movie. And the result is a smattering of overly long movies that are 30 minutes to an hour over what the story needs or deserves. I don't like movies that are primarily driven by effects, plot, characters, and acting are all far more important to me, to the point that I don't like most CGI heavy movies anymore. Movies heavy on action are now more boring than a slow thoughtful film. Example, it watch The Prestige 100 times before watching Jurassic World, FK. Zack Snyder should not have superhero movie privileges, except for maybe Watchmen. He's given us a twisted snitter version of each superhero in his movies, which often betrays the core concept of that hero and misrepresents them to the public. Superman is not detached or alien. He's a relatable down-to-earth dude. Batman doesn't kill people or use guns. These are baby's first Batman facts. I'm fine with Snyder's Batman, but I agree that his take on Superman is ridiculous. Squid Game and the concept of a bunch of people being forced to play some wild games, is a heavily recycled trope in Asian media. At least this time they didn't boil it down to gods or magic or some other random, inexplicable thing. If you have to recourse to method acting in order to play a role instead of being able to switch roles on and off, you are not a very good actor to begin with. It's the peak of Hollywood actor pretentiousness. Gary Oldman loves to make fun of method actors. IDK how controversial this is. But I wish queer movies can exist in the realm outside of sad gay movies and we that can get our fair share of cutesy rom-coms and better movies in general. Have you seen Netflix's single all the way? It's a cheesy gay Christmas romance movie. No homophobia. No coming out storyline. 
Scarlett Johansson is a terrible actor. It's actually amazing how little she does and gets away with it. I agree but she was exceptional and believable in Marriage Story. Incredibles 2 was an incredibly mediocre movie. It's only saving grace was bits of nostalgia. But even then wasn't satisfying for me. Everyone I knew was raving about how good it was. But it was honestly just frustrating to watch. I don't remember much about it anymore. But I remember being really frustrated when they defeated the mind controlled good guys continuously and refused to take off their mind control glasses. So they just kept coming back until the kids eventually got captured. Then when the super dramatic fight against their parents came, they instantly take off their parents glasses and there was no drama in it whatsoever. I hate sex scenes. When I was a horny teenager I loved them. But they are usually unnecessary and take away from the film. Even makeout scenes. I hate the sound of other people kissing. The only sex scene I loved was in Deadpool. That was hilarious. Pixar lost their way after Disney bought them. Take and resentful upvote because Wally and Up are some of the best movies Pixar has to offer. Leonardo DiCaprio puts on good performances but he's not even close to the great actors he's regularly compared to. His characters are immersive for like one scene in each of his movies. Outside of that all I see is Leonardo DiCaprio acting well. When I watch Taxi Driver I don't even think of it as De Niro. All I see is Travis Bickle. When I watch Godfather I don't think of them as Brando or Pacino. I just see Vito and Michael. When I watch Devil Wears Prada I don't see Meryl Streep. She transforms into Miranda. He can embody the character for short periods of time and it's usually an angry outburst or a breakdown. Trailer breakdown in Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Angry outburst in Django. The quaalude scene in Wolf of Wall Street. He's very good but he's not an all time great. Edit. Stop telling me to watch one of his movies. I have seen them. All of them. My assessment isn't based on like two movies.